Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. For today's topic, we will discover two types of respiration, the aerobic and anaerobic respiration, also known as the cellular respiration and fermentation. At the end of this video, learners are expected to explain the process of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is a process that requires oxygen, while anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Aerobic respiration starts with glycolysis, followed by pyruvate oxidation, then Krebs cycle, then the last stage is oxidative phosphorylation. These four stages produces carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. On the other hand, there are two types of anaerobic respiration the alcohol and lactic acid fermentation that creates ethanol and lactate or lactic acid. During aerobic cellular respiration, glucose reacts with oxygen, forming ATP that can be used by the cell. Carbon dioxide and water are created as byproducts. The overall equation for aerobic cellular respiration is wherein 1 molecule of glucose plus 6 molecules of oxygen will produce 6 molecules of carbon dioxide, 6 molecules of water, and 32 to 36 ATP. The main difference between photosynthesis and cellular respiration is that photosynthesis is an anabolic process where the synthesis of organic compounds occurs, storing energy, whereas cellular respiration is a catabolic process where the stored organic compounds are utilized, producing energy. As shown in the chemical equation, the reactance of photosynthesis is the byproducts of cellular respiration, while the byproducts of photosynthesis is the reactance of cellular respiration. In plants, the one that performs photosynthesis is the chloroplast. But how about in cellular respiration? Mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. It generates cellular energy, which is ATP or adenosine triphosphate. More active cells like muscle cells have more mitochondria, and both plants and animals have it. It is also the site of cellular respiration. Mitochondria are shaped perfectly to maximize their productivity. They are made of two membranes. The outer membrane covers the organelle and contains it like a skin, and the inner membrane folds over many times and creates layered structures called cristae. Let's begin with glycolysis. Take note that glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell and it doesn't require the use of oxygen. Therefore, glycolysis is considered as an anaerobic respiration. Glycolysis can be broken down into two main phases, the energy requiring phase above the dotted line in the image and the energy releasing phase below the dotted line. In the energy requiring phase, the starting molecule of glucose gets rearranged, and two phosphate groups are attached to it. The phosphate groups makes the modified sugar, now called fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which is unstable, allowing it to split in half and form two phosphate bearing three carbon sugars. Because the phosphates used in this step come from the ATP, two ATP molecules get used up. The three carbon sugars form when the unstable sugar breaks down are different from each other. Only one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can enter the next step. However, the unfavorable sugar, DHAP, can be easily converted into the favorable one, so both finish the pathway in the end. While the energy-releasing phase, each 3-carbon sugar is converted into another 3-carbon molecule, pyruvate, through a series of reactions. In these reactions, two ATP and one NADH molecule are made. Because this phase takes place twice, once for each of the two 3-carbon sugars, it makes four ATP and two NADH overall. After producing the pyruvate in glycolysis, two molecules of it will be converted into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. Two carbons are released as carbon dioxide out of the six originally present in glucose, wherein two NADH are generated from NAD. But why do we need to make acetyl-CoA? Acetyl-CoA serves as fuel for the citric acid cycle in the next stage of cellular respiration. 
The addition of COA helps activate the acetyl group, preparing it to undergo the necessary reactions to enter the citric acid cycle. In the first step of the cycle, acetyl-CoA combines with a 4-carbon acceptor molecule known as the oxaloacetate to form a 6-carbon molecule called citrate. After a quick rearrangement, this 6-carbon molecule releases two of its carbons as carbon dioxide molecules in a pair of similar reactions, producing a molecule of NADH each time. The enzymes that catalyze these reactions are key regulators of the citric acid cycle, speeding it up or slowing it down based on the cell's energy needs. The remaining 4-carbon molecule undergoes a series of additional reactions, first by making an ATP molecule or in some cells a similar molecule called GTP, then reducing the electron carrier FAD to FADH2, and finally generating another NADH. This set of reactions regenerates the starting molecule, oxaloacetate, so the cycle can repeat. Overall, one turn of the citric acid cycle releases two carbon dioxide molecules and produces three NADH, one FADH2, and one ATP. The citric acid cycle goes around twice for each molecule of glucose that enters cellular respiration because there are two pyruvates and thus two acetyl coas made per glucose. The last stage of cellular respiration is oxidative phosphorylation or the electron transport chain. What does the electron transport chain do for the cell? It has two important functions. First, it regenerates electron carriers. NADH and FADH2 pass their electrons to the electron transport chain, turning back into NAD and FAD. This is important because the oxidized forms of these electron carriers are used in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, and must be available to keep these processes running. Second, it makes a proton gradient. The transport chain builds a proton gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane with a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space and a lower concentration in the matrix. This gradient represents a stored form of energy. And as well see, it can be used to make ATP. The electron transport chain is a series of proteins and organic molecules found in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Electrons are passed from one member of the transport chain to another in a series of redox reactions. Energy release in these reactions is captured as a proton gradient, which is then used to make ATP in a process called chemiosmosis. Together, the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis make up oxidative phosphorylation. The key steps of this process, shown in simplified form in the diagram presented, includes First, is the delivery of electrons by NADH and FADH2. Reduce electron carriers like NADH and FADH2 from the other steps of cellular respiration, transfer their electrons to molecules near the beginning of the transport chain. In the process, they turn back into NAD and FAD, which can be reused in other steps of cellular respiration. Second is electron transfer and proton pumping. As electrons are passed down the chain, they move from a higher to a lower energy level, releasing energy. Some of the energy is used to pump hydrogen ions, moving them out of the matrix and into the intermembrane space. This pumping establishes an electrochemical gradient. Third is splitting of oxygen to form water. At the end of the electron transport chain, electrons are transferred to molecular oxygen which splits in half and takes up hydrogen ion to form water. Lastly, is the gradient-driven synthesis of ATP. As hydrogen ions flow down their gradient and back into the matrix, they pass through an enzyme called ATP synthase, which harnesses the flow of protons to synthesize ATP. In summary, cellular respiration produces the following. Six molecules of carbon dioxide, 6 molecules of water, and a 36 net of ATP. Fermentation is a kind of anaerobic respiration wherein its pathways consist of glycolysis with some extra reactions stacked on at the end. In yeast, the extra reactions make alcohol, while in your muscles, they make lactic acid. 
alcohol fermentation occurs in yeast and some bacteria. Glucose is firstly converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Pyruvate is then converted into acetaldehyde, wherein carbon dioxide is released in this reaction. And finally, acetaldehyde is then converted into ethanol. While lactic acid fermentation occurs in bacteria, but can also occur in skeletal muscle of animals during low oxygen levels. Glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Pyruvate is then converted into lactate by an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase. To summarize, aerobic respiration reactants are glucose and oxygen, while in anaerobic respiration is only glucose. The products produced in aerobic respiration are ATP, water, and carbon dioxide, while in anaerobic are ATP and lactic acid in animals, or ATP, ethanol, and carbon dioxide using yeast. The location of aerobic respiration starts in the cytoplasm pertaining only to glycolysis, while the other stages of aerobic respiration is in the mitochondria. Anaerobic respiration happens only in the cytoplasm. The different stages of aerobic respiration are glycolysis, which is considered anaerobic because it doesn't require the use of oxygen in order for it to take place, while others requires the use of oxygen, like Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. In anaerobic respiration, the stages are only glycolysis and fermentation. The amount of ATP produced in aerobic respiration is 36, while in anaerobic respiration is 2. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe by clicking the notification bell for more science educational videos.